welcome back to this week's video. Um, today um, I thought I would show you a bit more of Bath itself because in my recent videos I've been going to different villages around Bath but not actually showing you the city which is very beautiful. Lots of tourists love to come to Bath for many reasons. It's filled with lovely Georgian architecture, it's used in many films and things and today I'm planning to show you around the Abbey because there's um, a cathedral in Bath which is very beautiful and very old and also to go to Sally Lunds, which is really famous for its bath buns, and I'll tell you more about that later um, when I'm there, but that's the plan for today, so let's go! Located right at the heart of the city, the impressive cathedral of Bath Abbey towers right beside the Roman baths and contrasts the otherwise Georgian style found elsewhere with its Gothic medieval facade. The building is Grade 1 listed and has always played a central role in Bath. Even today, it is a place not only of worship, but of concerts, lectures, and a range of other ceremonies. The history of this place goes all the way back to the Anglo-Saxon times, with the earliest records of a Saxon convent here from 675 AD. It was designated as a convent of holy virgins, which is fascinating to think of a community of women living and praying here over 1,300 years ago. Today, the Abbey Girls' Choir can be seen as a continuation of a tradition that spans centuries. One thing that stands out to me is how much of the wall is covered with windows. In fact, the building has 52 windows, which makes up 80% of the wall space. When inside the building, this gives an impression of lightness, and the play of light on the stones and carvings is beautiful. From the outside, I have always thought that it makes the building look rather like a lantern. Bath Abbey is mainly celebrated for its fan vaulted ceiling, which is considered as one of the finest examples of fan vaulting in the country. We have the Virtue Brothers, Robert and William, to thank for the masterpiece. They were builders to King Henry VII and constructed the ceiling during the early 1500s. However, if you have a sharp eye, you will notice that one end of the ceiling is a bit different from the other. This is because they never actually completed the work, and the ceiling wasn't finished until much later during the 19th century. When I visited the Abbey, I went on the tower tour, where visitors can go behind the scenes and explore the roof, the clock, the bell ringing room and climb the tower, all whilst learning about the history of the Abbey. A funny story actually, was that apparently, um, once during one of the tours, a five-year-old child pulled one of the cogs behind the clock and broke it, thus resulting in damage costing thousands of pounds. The clock remained broken for three months, which caused a lot of chaos. The Abbey received many complaints from the people of Bath that they had missed buses, been late to job interviews, all because the clock was showing the wrong time. It's surprising because you would think that everyone today checks the time on their phone, or owns their own watch, but nevertheless the clock on the Abbey still plays a vital role in people's lives. The 212 step climb to the top of the tower is worth every step because you are rewarded with the best, unbeatable views over the city. And that is what Bath is most famous for, its skyline seeing the neat rows of terraced houses all built in beautiful honey-coloured bath stone winding their way around the hills is breathtaking and whenever i catch sight of the view i can't help but feel transported into a jane austen novel if you ever visit the abbey at bath i would highly recommend joining one of the tower tours because afterwards i had a much deeper appreciation of the history the architecture and the general running of the abbey and you learn lots of unique stories that you can't hear anywhere else Just outside to the south of the Abbey is the Rebecca Fountain, erected by the Bath Temperance Association in 1861. The fountain has a beautiful Sicilian marble statue of a woman in eastern dress pouring water from the pitcher into a bowl. But what I find amusing are the words chiselled into the marble. The words, water is best, are stretched along the front. Apparently the fountain was supposed to encourage against and help prevent drunkenness, but I just find it rather funny. So I've made it to Sally Lunds, which is the oldest eating house in Bath, and I'm going to go in there for a bun and we're going to have lunch with my mum and I'll show you what we get. But basically the buns, they used to serve them instead of plates, so they'll put the dinner onto the buns. It's really interesting and I'll show you what it looks like. Sally Lunds is one of the top tourist destinations in Bath, not only for the delicious buns, but for the history woven into the place. The story goes that all the way back in 1680, when Solange Louillon, a Huguenot refugee, arrived in Bath after escaping persecution in France, she found work in a bakery. She started her career selling baked goods out of her basket in the streets of Bath. 
but due to her French name being unfamiliar and therefore difficult to pronounce, she soon became known as Sally Lunn. She started to bake fluffy, rich, brioche-style buns, which could be enjoyed with either savoury or sweet toppings, and they quickly rose to popularity in Georgian England, so much so that high society specifically came to this bakery requesting the Sally Lunn bun. Today, the bun still retains its popularity, with people coming from all over the world to try it. I had the chicken and ham hock trencher, made to a 17th century recipe with wine, herbs, spices, raisins, which is a bit different, and vegetables. It was so good, and for dessert, I shared a cinnamon bun with my mum. I can honestly say that the buns live up to their reputation. I absolutely love them. Downstairs in the basement, there's a small museum where you can see the original medieval oven based on Roman designs, as well as the old Roman street level and archaeological finds. So as you saw from the footage at Sally Lunn's, I ate the traditional Sally Lunn bun, which was invented in the Sally Lunn um, shop. And like I said, they used to be used as plates. Obviously nowadays they, sell, they serve them on actual plates, but the bun um, served as the plate in those times in the 1700s. And it's really clever because um, the stews, all the sauce and the juices would soak into the bun and it's so delicious. I got the chicken and ham hock one and it was really good. It used a 17th century recipe and it had like spices and raisins and it was very different, but really good and it had like a garlic butter sauce on the bun and for dessert I shared with my mum a cinnamon one because we couldn't fit a whole other half of a the bun they're really big and filling but it's really delicious because the bread is really light and fluffy a bit like a brioche so it was really delicious and if you're ever in Bath you just have to go to Sally Lunn's um, and now I'm just kind of walking around Bath as you can see it's behind me very beautiful and I'll show you um, just you know what Bath is generally like so this bridge behind me is really famous, it's called Pulteney Bridge and it's famous because it's filled with shops and cafes and it's in the Palladian style and it's really beautiful. Um, walking around Bath with me and seeing some of the sites that the city has to offer and um, if you enjoyed this video then please like it and subscribe to my channel to join me on more adventures and I will see you next time bye